Guitar 101 Rammstein, and in this video I'm going to go over the top 10 intermediate guitar mistakes I see commonly. Yesterday I did a video on the top 5 beginner mistakes, and uh, I got a response from Nathan Ator, who asked for me to do a video on intermediate mistakes. So, here we are. And, um, you know, saying intermediate guitarist, it's kind of a broad spectrum as to what is intermediate, what's not what is beginner, etc. But either way, I think people of all levels can sort of take something away from any of these tips, hopefully. So let's get started. We're going to look at mistake number one, and that is learning material that is too repetitive or too easy. Uh, some people will have their favorite bands, and they're learning songs from that band. When I was in high school, I remember I knew a kid that really liked Metallica. He learned a lot of Metallica songs. He could play them very good. But if you asked him to play anything else, it sounded like Metallica. So if you're learning only from one source, you're going to be pretty much cloning it. You're not going to get any new ideas that way. Also, if you're learning easy stuff, you want to push your limit. You want to get a little bit out of your comfort zone. Try to learn things that are a bit more challenging. Uh, sometimes learning different styles of music, even if it's a style you're not into, you will find something to take away from that to put into your own style of playing. So on to number two, I'm using my cheat sheet here, but that is ignoring dynamics. And I see this in all levels of playing, especially in more amateur or uh, beginner levels, but also in people who've played for a long time. Uh, dynamics, if you don't know, it's the basically your volume of playing. So if I'm if I have a riff that's quieter, where it's plucked softer, it gets louder. volume I'm not changing anything I'm just changing how I pluck um, I see a lot of guitarists kind of ignore those little details which are huge details in music where they're plucking the same volume all the way through so you want to pay attention to pay attention to dynamics that is a big thing it makes a big difference in the sound it seems like a small detail but it's actually very huge onwards to number three and that is going to vibrato too soon that's um very easy habit to get so especially when you're playing like a lead melody or a solo and you're just like you just hit the vibrato right away give that note some room to breathe let it just pluck it normal then add the vibrato at the end you'll see that it will add a huge new dimension to your playing because it, it's adding like a if i hit a note with vibrato it's I guess you could say two-dimensional. It's a note with vibrato that waiting to put it in adds a third dimension because so it's that note normal, then the vibrato. It's, um, as, we, as you play more and more, that vibrato kind of thing, it comes naturally. You just do it on instinct, and it's really easy to overkill it. I'm not saying you should never put vibrato at the beginning of a note, but experiment with that, and you'll give yourself a bigger range in your uh, in how it sounds when you play so let's go to number four that is avoiding the little finger this is a common one I think it actually it goes to a lot of different levels of guitar playing everyone likes to not use the little finger because it's the weakest smallest finger so um, you see people doing this baseball grip a lot or just playing within three frets or doing these awkward movements and stretches with the ring finger and even like which we can get away with but you're actually limiting yourself when you want to put notes in between in scales the little finger is always going to be the hardest to work with and I have done videos in the past which I'll, I'll probably redo on just exercise the exercises alone for the little finger the 
more you develop it, the more to your favor it's going to benefit you. So let's get to number, where are we? Number five. Focusing on the fretting hand only. That's the big thing. Everyone's always concentrating on their fretting hand. But the picking hand, or your plucking hand, whatever, that's producing the sound from the guitar. And if you don't produce a good sound, whatever you're doing with the fretting hand, it kind of, it doesn't balance out. Let's put it that way. So there's a lot of exercises focused on on the fretting hand. The picking hand gets kind of put to the back and it's just as important. So um, if you're focusing a lot on the fretting hand, focus a little bit on just your, your picking hand, whether it's strumming chords, whether it's alternate picking, whatever, it's, it's really producing the sound. And that even goes back to what I said about dynamics, things like that. So do not forget about the picking hand. Let's get to number six. And that's being tuner dependent. Using a tuner is great. There's no problem with that. Uh, if you only use a tuner though, and this is a problem I see with a lot of these intermediate level guitarists, you don't learn to tune by ear and you're, you're not learning a very important thing of ear training. So even if you have a tuner or if you have a, one of these cool guitars with like a Evertune bridge or a robot guitar by Fender, don't always rely on that. Tune by ear. You're going to learn a lot of stuff from tuning. You learn to listen for details that you won't know to hear. And that's going to benefit you in playing, even for um, for bending notes, things like that. It has a lot of advantages. You should always be able to tune by ear, and you should practice that. You should really get good at it. I see a lot of guitarists that are actually well beyond intermediate that have a hard time tuning by ear. And that's kind of strange. Most of the time, I mean, unless you have a really nice guitar, the intonation, the higher you're going to go up, or the older your strings are, it's going to be off. So you got to kind of bend the notes to make it sound good. And if you don't have the ear for that, you're probably going to mess that up. All right, number seven, going gear crazy. A lot of people get into this niche where they're like, they think they have to buy all this gear, this new gear to make their sound better. Remember the saying, there's most of the tone is in your fingertips. And that's true to a sense. I mean, I'm playing right now a Strat with single coil pickups. So if I want to get that really heavy metal sound, it's not the guitar to go to. I can do it, but I'm not going to get exactly what I'm looking for. Likewise, if I play a guitar with uh, active humbuckers and try to get that Strat single coil sound, it's not going to work. But people get really carried away with gear. And... Buying the same gear as your favorite guitarist is not going to make you sound like that guitarist. It's just not going to do it. You're going to waste a lot of money. Some people like to collect gear. That's fine. It's it's awesome to have gear. But really, you should focus more on making what you have work. Um, I've done this a lot in the past. I've never, you know, I've been a musician for a long time, so I've, I'm always broke. I work with what I've got. I've used some of the cheapest, crappiest guitars in recordings that actually sounded very good um, it's not that much about the gear the gear does help especially if you have a problematic guitar but buying the same strings the same cable the same guitar strap the same amp etc from your favorite guitarist is not going to make you sound like that guitarist it's in your fingers so onwards to number eight this is a good one practicing sitting down all the time there's nothing wrong with it but it's not the same as standing and playing. When you, We're looking at electric guitar mostly for this. So, Or if you're playing acoustic and you're standing and playing. If you're going to play live, make sure you practice standing up. Unless you're sitting down on stage, which is kind of strange. But um, I've seen this firsthand several times. And I've experienced it. Practicing sitting down, it's at a, I'm not wearing my guitar at this level when I stand up. It would look a little bit funky and I don't play jazz. I'm wearing it a little bit lower normally. And it's not only that, it's also just like if you're in the habit of tapping your foot, if your dominant foot is forward and you're not used to tapping that foot, it, it throws everything off. Uh, you want to practice standing up as well as sitting down. So you can play both ways. I've seen people really struggle with this. Uh, I remember a band I was in, uh, we, I, a friend of mine, I got him a job in the band as a session guitarist. 
And before the first audition, I heard him play through the material and I made sure he practiced it and it sounded really good. We went to the first practice together and he kind of slaughtered it. He played really bad. He screwed up a lot. We took a coffee break and I sat down with him over the parts that he screwed up and he played it perfectly. I was like, what's going on? Are you nervous? And, no, I don't know what's going on. And then it came to mind like, oh, you're sitting down and playing. How about standing up and playing? And that was it. it a week later, he practiced standing up and he was able to nail the material. So yeah, don't only practice sitting down. Number nine is economy of motion, and that goes for all levels of playing. That's something I still always and forever will work on. Economy of motion is not wasting movement. You know, you're, it could be for beginners, it's usually a thing like lifting a finger where you don't have to. You know, like if I'm going from uh, two notes back and forth. <laughs> As possible I want to do it the laziest way possible but if I'm lifting this index finger where I don't have to see that's noisy but it's also making making things harder to do it's making more room for mistakes I can actually bring that finger down poorly or off time so economy of motion there's a lot to do with that but that's one thing in general that people it's a common mistake and it's one of those things you're never going to perfect you're going to always work on finally number 10 and that is learning only riffs um, I always said the best way to learn guitar is by learning songs and sometimes we can learn songs and there's a cool riff and the rest of it's really boring look at the most common song everybody learns on guitar that would be smoke on the water you know we have that killer like <laughs> But nobody really learns like the rest of it. The because it's not a really interesting riff. Um, either way, though, when you learn a song all the way through, you're learning more than just these boring riffs in between. You're learning song structure. You're learning how to count, which is very important. Uh, you're learning songwriting as well. So. It's very easy to get in this habit of learning just riff, 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 riff here. All these cool riffs, which is not a bad thing, but make sure you're also learning songs all the way through. There's something to learn in that. Even in the most basic, boring, easy songs, you could even take some really like, um, something like Fortunate Son from Creedence Clearwater Revival. It's a super, super basic structure, but it works. It's really cool. So you can learn something from even the easiest songs. There's always something to learn from learning a song. Learning riffs, you'll learn a lot of technique and cool riffs, but song structure is also equally as important. And those are my top 10 that I could think of. I mean, honestly, when I got asked to do this, which was this morning when I woke up, I had to struggle to think of five things, and then I came up with seven, and I was like, oh, okay, when 10. And I could think of a lot more, but those are my top 10. Anything I'm forgetting or someone has in mind, bring it up in the comments below. It's always interesting to hear this stuff. And thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you liked. Hit like if you liked. Uh, I'll put my PayPal channel in the description below. I got demonetized a while back, so anyone who wants to support the channel, feel free to send a donation. That's always appreciated, and it motivates me to do more videos, which I do on a time is allowed basis. So hopefully... I'll find more time for him in the future. That's it for now. Till the next time.